one of the most difficult things about being a dementia caregiver is dealing with aggressive behavior. And if you hang out in the support groups like I do, especially the one that I run, you're going to see stories like this. When he disobeyed doctor's orders 24 hours after surgery, and when I tried to reason with him, he still refused to take care of himself. This instigated an argument, and when I tried to stop him from going upstairs, he grabbed my wrist and twisted so hard it almost broke it, but only left bruises that did not go away for over a week. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you four different levels of approaches that you can take with aggressive behavior, with some examples of what that aggressive behavior might look like, and exactly what you should do in order to deal with it to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Mind you, this is all from the perspective of someone who works as a therapist at a psychiatric hospital for dementia folks. So usually we see our folks because of aggressive behavior. Welcome to Dementia Success Path. I'm Krista, and this is the place where we share tips, strategies, and get support so that we can find success on our path as a caregiver. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that YouTube alerts you of any videos that I post. And also something really exciting, I am starting a free educational email series. So if you're interested in that, make sure to sign up down below. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Mary, you're wearing two sweaters. You gotta take one off. No, get off of me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. The first level in dealing with aggressive behavior in dementia patients is asking and giving choices. You would be very surprised how much we find ourselves commanding folks that have dementia versus asking them or giving them options, whether it's convenience or we really need to get something done or even their health and safety. It happens a lot more than we realize. And oftentimes a very angry outburst or somebody that is being very aggressive is being that way because they have a lot of built up frustration from being told what to do all the time. So an easy way that you can help deescalate them is to ask them if they could take off the sweater, for example, or if you give them a choice, like, hey, can I take off the sweater for you or would you like to keep it on for 20 more minutes? Something along those lines. I see you're putting on a couple sweaters. Would you like me to take one of the sweaters for you or do you want to keep them on? I want you to leave me alone. Okay. I can leave you alone. I'll be back in a little bit, okay? The second level of dealing with aggressive behavior, if the first one doesn't work, is giving them some space to cool off. Now, this is very important because sometimes when emotions are running high and they're very agitated, they're not going to hear what you're going to say anyways. So it's better to just give them some space if it's safe to do so and come back when they have cooled off a little bit and they're much more likely to maybe accept some choices or answer a question from you when they're a little bit less upset. Mom, are you, a oh, get away, get away, get away. Jeez, okay, okay. Um, Mom, I'm gonna go on the other side of the room, okay? Okay, honey. Uh, we need to get some help. Maybe you can come over here to try to help me get mom in a better situation, okay? All right, all right. We probably need to call the doctor or something. We need some more help, okay? The third level of dealing with a patient who is aggressive or your loved one who is aggressive is calling for help. Just trust me when I say this. Once they get to a point where they are screaming, they are kicking, they are becoming violent with you, this is the point where you and them are at the most risk. And I understand a lot of times we're by ourselves with them. So what I would suggest is do what you can to get them in a safe position with you doing as little as possible to intervene with them, i.e. touch them. 
and give them a chance to strike out at you if it's at all possible and call for help, whether it be a family member, a friend, a community service, doctors, paramedics, police, anybody to come and help you so that you can get your loved one and yourself the safety and the help that you need. The last level of dealing with a aggressive patient or an aggressive loved one is thinking about placement if they are still living at home or thinking about getting them hospitalized if they're living at home or if they're living at skilled nursing or boarding care or assisted living or what have you. It's really important to consider this because like I said before in the previous one, we cannot do this alone. And I know at my hospital, it takes a whole team of us in order to make sure that everybody is well taken care of. So if we have any fears about that, hopefully that will quell some fears that are in there, as well as assure you that you're not a bad caregiver if this happens. This is something that happens with a good amount of people that get dementia, Alzheimer's, Lewy body, all kinds of dementias. Also, something to look out for that is very, very important. If you see this change be very sudden, like they go from being very pleasant most of the time to all of a sudden out of nowhere, getting aggressive and violent and screaming and just a total 180. In my experience from what I have seen, granted as someone who isn't a medical person, but what I've seen the most often is a medical issue is happening at the same time as dementia. What I've seen the most often is a UTI and it blows my mind every time someone with UTI is treated, how crazy different their demeanor is after that issue has been taken care of. So that is something to absolutely seek help for and support because we can't do it alone once it gets to an issue of health and safety. Again, if you want more tips and strategies, I'm starting an educational series via email that is linked in the description box below. And again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and give us a like and comment. Tell us which one surprised you or which level you are going to use with your loved one or a patient that you work with. I appreciate you all coming so much to this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.